Hi everyone and welcome to the Mastery webinar series. Uh, today's episode, Managing Your Enterprise APIs as Products. I'm Andy Raskin, Director of Product Marketing at Mastery, and I'm joined today by Jeremy Pollack. Hey Jeremy. Hi Andy, how are you doing? Good. Um, so Jeremy's uh, Mastery's Director of Product Management. Um, as always, we'll speak for about 20-25 minutes and then take questions at the end. Uh, you can type a question at any time in the question panel on the GoToWebinar screen. Um, so, really, this year, uh, starting at the beginning of the year when uh, Google Maps announced that they were going to charge for, for heavy usage and uh, we saw the Bing API announcement that Microsoft was going to be uh, doing the same. Uh, really, this year is shaping up as the year that APIs graduated from technology to more of a product. In fact, all of these enterprises, uh, many of these are actually customers, but, but some are not, um, are generating revenue through their APIs. Um, and why does it make sense to think about APIs as products? Well, to reach customers uh, more and more, this means getting your assets into the apps that your customers use. These assets could be you know, your product-related data, like product images, uh, product descriptions, prices, uh, services, so these could be uh, publishing services, uh, other kinds of online services, uh, your commerce engine, all kinds of support info. Of course, there's much, much more. Um, and an API, of course, is the best way to make life easy for the people who are, are building these apps, uh, which we think of in uh, three groups the internal developers, basically your colleagues who are going to be building your the branded apps and websites that you're delivering to customers, uh, strategic partners, so companies, distributors, licensees, affiliates who are going to be carrying your products and your brand to, to customers, uh, potentially in a co-branded way. And of course more and more we're seeing public developers as an audience here too, so uh, developers who uh, may not have a, a contractual relationship with the company, uh, but who are uh, able to, to build apps and websites with your assets in a way that's beneficial for you. Um, and what we're seeing is that more and more uh, companies are taking all kinds of different approaches to what are the, the five P's of product marketing. Uh, product price, promotion, place, and people. And let's just take let's take a look at uh, each of these and talk about all the different kind of variations we're seeing. Uh, so in terms of product, we see all kinds of different feature sets. So that of course the uh, when you're releasing an API, there's a whole product design component. So what methods are you going to make available? How are you going to design those? All of that. Um, terms of use. So are you going to allow commercial use, non-commercial use for one thing, all kinds of other considerations. Uh, the, the, the manual in the box, so documentation, and we're seeing all kinds of, uh, of course, static documentation, but now more interactive docs with things like Mastery I.O. docs. There's a whole uh, product uh, readiness piece as well around QAing the API and various approaches to this. In some cases, the, the API is almost like a beta uh, and the idea is for developers to get involved in helping to perfect it and in some cases it's more of a, of a, a fully finished product that's uh, out there for real production use. Uh, and of course the product lifecycle management, so versioning cycles we saw the announcement from Google recently that they were going to standardize their uh, versioning cycles at one year for all of their APIs, uh, but of course many approaches to this. We also see all kinds of variations on pricing. 
these are just a couple, th th these are just the very broad categories, so free, freemium, and paid. Of course, there's all kinds of different variations on these. Uh, one really interesting approach to the freemium model is uh, we, we see with Expedia. So Expedia's mastery powered API drives uh, over a billion dollars in affiliate revenue for Expedia. But one of the really interesting things is that they're, they have a public version of this API that lets you do everything that you could do with the, the partner API. You just can't book any travel. And so you say, well, why is that? Uh, why would I want to use that? Well, it turns out that you know there, there may be some developer at a tra at a travel company or a startup who has some idea. Well, this lets them build a proof of concept that maybe their business development folks can then take to Expedia to form uh, a more uh, formal revenue generating partnership. So this freemium model, we're seeing it more and more. Uh, Dun and Bradstreet does a very similar thing where they have a public API that allows folks to uh, build with Dun & Bradstreet uh, data. They just get garbled data. So again, you can build a proof of concept uh, and then if there's a more formal relationship, uh, you can build on that. Uh, place, you know, place in the typical product, we think of where the customer is going to interact with the product, buy it. Uh, so typically retail stores, etc. For APIs, of course, we're t typically talking about a developer portal, and there's so many different kinds of developer portals. This one from Three Taps, it's very straightforward, um, kind of technically focused, uh, right away presenting all the different uh, platforms uh, that they have enabled with their API. Uh, but the ESPN developer portal uh, is much more uh, about you know the ESPN brand and integrating that with uh, all the things that are going to be possible with the API for developers. That's a great point. I think when you look at something like ESPN and even the three taps portal, I think it's important to note that the portal itself is reflective of the overall brand. Yep. Um, so yep. it's not a, a disconnected experience. You might be giving different information, of course, to developers. You may be marketing differently to developers. But it's a, a from a brand experience. You're integrating your API as a product into your overall brand. Yeah, and so the the this place, this distribution uh, point for your API is very much a part of the product experience yep. of the API. Definitely. Yeah. Um, promotion, of course, big part of any product strategy. And we see, again here, all kinds of different approaches to promotion. Uh, so at Comcast, the uh, API is very much uh, internally focused. So Comcast, uh, in the past, had a lot of trouble sharing information between different departments. So TV program, data, subscriber info, cable box info, you know, all the things you need to build some, build the kind of cool apps like on your uh, on your smartphone, you could touch a program and then have that be recorded in your uh, in your bedroom DVR. There's lots of information comes into play for that. They were finding it would take many many months to just even get a developer access to all the things they needed. Uh, Augustin Shapira, uh, real visionary at Comcast, uh, built uh, a platform that he calls Code Big, and he has. Uh, promoted code big within the company as the place to expose APIs, the place where if you're going to build any kind of service, you want to uh, make that accessible via RESTful API uh, and so that everybody else can build stuff on top of it. So uh, he's done an incredible job at, um, at promoting that within the company. Uh, of course, Mastery <coughs> works on behalf of many of our clients to uh, encourage engagement both to inside developer, so developers are going to be inside your company and outside your company. Uh, so encourage engagement through hackathons, whether those be public hackathons or internal hackathons, uh, our uh, developer outreach newsletter, which reaches uh, over 150,000 developers. Uh, 
uh, all kinds of activities that really evangelize the API. Yeah, I think that's an important note to, to emphasize is that, and going back to that Comcast example where the Comcast developer community were all internal developers. Augustine was trying to communicate and market out their APIs to internal consumers of that. People tend to think often that, you know, API to open developers. In this case, you know, I think the, the, the developer outreach is as important when you look at uh, promoting and marketing your API or set of services even internally. Mm -hmm. yep, yep. Yeah, we're seeing so much interest in uh, how do I promote my API so that the company gets excited about it and all the possibilities and all the things we can do. Um, and then the fifth P in the product marketing five P's, uh, people. This is one that sometimes uh, folks forget about. But even with APIs, we're seeing companies build really interesting, unique cultures uh, around that API's product. So this example is the one from Twilio. Uh, so Twilio uh, requires that every employee build at least an app. Uh, also, you have to draw an owl. That's, a, that's another story. But you have to at least build an app uh, with the Twilio API. And one of their guys built this app called Call and Oats, where you could call this phone number and uh, listen to uh, a Hall and Oats song of your choice. And this thing just got incredible pickup uh, on, I was listening to NPR, I heard about it, it was all kinds of news outlets. I mean, that's icing on the cake. The, the real benefit is that, you know, everyone in the company uh, has experienced the API and uh, understands its power and all the cool things you can do with it. I wonder how many people out there right now on this webinar have a Hall & Oates song in their mind. And are maybe, I, I know I do. <laughs> and are probably calling Hall & Oates right now. Um, all right, so if we accept that APIs are uh, really turning into products, well, what's really interesting is that we're not just seeing that, we're, we're seeing some companies uh, release entire product lines of APIs. A great example is ESPN. We saw their portal, the front page of their portal earlier. This is a more uh, internal page if you go and look at their APIs. By the way, the ESPN portal is developer.espn.com if you want to check it out. Um, you can see that they have created essentially plans, uh, public, a public plan, a partner plan, a premium partner plan, and then there's this ESPN internal plan. So, and as you can imagine, the uh, the kind of methods, uh, the uh, permissions you have, the ability to make more and more calls increases as you uh, move through these different plans. Um, you know, what's really happening is, you know, think about the, uh, the example of a cable company. The cable company has uh, many packages, and within those packages, plans for different segments of its users. And each of those plans is bundling up a collection of services, a collection of usage limits, and uh, what we'll call filters. So, you know, you can get some channels, you can't get other channels, uh, you can get all channels. In the very same way, we're seeing companies uh, package their API access this way. Instead of those uh, cable and, and phone services, where it's, you know, it's all the different methods. So which methods are you going to allow folks to uh, have access to? Uh, what traffic limits do you want to enforce? And what filters might you want to put on the content? Um, and of course, there are tools available today to create API packages, uh, but they typically force the IT department to do it themselves, basically do some sort of reconfiguration of the API programming or uh, some sort of uh, coding. And our estimation is that when you put together the, the actual uh, specification for that, uh, creating a new service definition, testing that, uh, coding response uh, filters, this can be several days uh, worth of, of, of time. And 
becomes very, very difficult to scale that to, to hundreds or thousands of partners. Yeah, and, and this is just about creation. So it doesn't even speak to the costs associated with ongoing maintenance mm -hmm. um, of your program. So as you, know, the, as you write code, as you have a, a very technical resource, go out and configure something, there is a, an ongoing maintenance cost that all, also has to be accounted for. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if we see this, this kind of productization, packagingization of APIs becoming a trend, uh, we thought, what, what if business side teams could do this packaging without having to go back to their IT colleagues uh, to make that happen? Uh, it would mean, of course, faster time to market for partnerships. Uh, it would mean uh, that it would give those who are negotiating the partnerships a lot more flexibility. Uh, they wouldn't be tied to some technical definition of what the API is. They could negotiate and create a package on the fly with a partner that, with terms that make the most sense. Um, and, of course, uh, much uh, reduced load on an IT department that would have to uh, previously, I've had to code that. So, uh, you, you may have heard a lot about APIs as products. Uh, Mastery is really uh, proud that we're actually reducing, uh, we're actually introducing product of our own to address that need uh, to support uh, API managers and companies that uh, want to do this uh, to make it much easier for them. Uh, Jeremy, do you want to talk about uh, Mastery API Packager? Sure. I would love to. Uh, Mashery API Packager builds upon Mashery's focus as a whole product and service to enable business owners, your API product managers, your API program managers, to really have control over how their services and data are delivered to their developers, whether it's a, a type partner, um, external developer community, or even internal developers. And it's all about allowing that API product manager, that business side person, to go in, first pick and choose which set of services, resources, data elements will be made available to different types of developers. So if you're an ESPN, you select different sets of services and data attributes that will be made, that will be made available to your public developers and potentially a different set of services and data elements that would be made available to your internal developers. And doing that all within a UI that's point and click that is targeted towards the business user. Business user. It is not about um, writing code. It's not a, about complex technical configuration. It's all about point and click and push out to your developers. So one of the key parts of the API Packager um, is that point and click, pick and choose which services and resources or methods will be included in a particular package plan. So again, if I want to give access down to the method or resource level, I can do so. So it's not coarse grain control over your services. You can actually control individual calls, set limits on individual calls, and then also control what attributes or data elements are returned in call responses. So here we're looking at the user interface for that point and click, pick and choose the things that I want to include in a package. And now we'll take a look at, well, how can I control the response? How can I, how can I without programming, go in and say, these data elements can only be seen by my open developers. These da data elements will be seen by my internal developers, and these other sets of data elements will be seen by my close partners. I'm doing that all through picking and choosing the things that I want to include. I can get a preview of my response so I can see how it will behave in the actual product, and then once I'm ready to go, I push the button, and my API packages are available for my developers. So just to, just to clarify what we're seeing here, uh, this would be uh, a method that returns uh, attributes such as, uh, there's one called COSMOLD, uh, there's one called Movie ID. Title of the movie. Title yep. of the movie. And what this uh, API manager or business side manager has done is said, 
for this package, I want to be able to return the movie ID, but not the title and not the release year. Correct. I want to be able to return the rating and the duration. Correct. And uh, in, whereas in the past, he may have had to go back to an IT manager and said, hey, could you recode maybe some new version of this method that returns these things? Or uh, could you code some sort of response filter in order to make this happen? Now it's just a, a point and click interface. Exactly. Um, so, could you speak a little bit to this slide? So, who who would want an a who who wants this API package, or who's it for? Why, and what are some of the use cases? Yeah, certainly. So, I think there there are two kind of target users for API package, and they both have different reasons why they want it. And I t I talked a little bit about the API product manager. So, if you're in a data services company, um, a retail company, for example, anyone that ultimately really is pushing out content, data, providing access to services, and they want fine-grained control over that access, that business person, that API product manager, will want API Packager because it'll, it'll give them the power to achieve their business requirements. Mm -hmm. The other target user is the IT manager, the person that you know is managing the development resources, the person that wants some control want some governance over access to their back end, but at the same time, they don't want to have to always write code in order to respond to the API product manager's business requirements. So we see this in you know, different types of verticals, whether it's data services, media, and retail, um, and many different reasons why, uh, or kind of use cases as to what the API product manager would be doing what kind of business requirements that they would have at any one of these verticals. And, and this is fairly consistent and common across the API programs that we manage through the mastery, mastery program um, or service. It would be, you know, obviously the, the obvious one is support different segments of developers, so public, private, close partners, different tiers of partners, internal developers, slicing and dicing your API to target those segments. Uh, some other interesting use cases, though, are when you begin to develop your API or you're testing out a new API product to be able to test that out, uh, get some performance data, um, and test it out in, in a controlled way. So have a, a beta program or beta groups and ultimately control the product life cycle. So it's, you know, again, talking about that governance and control over how people actually access your backend set of services, that product life cycle becomes important. When do you go live? When does it become available? When does it stop being available to developers? When are you going to stop supporting that particular API or version of that API? All these various use cases are targeted by the API Packager feature. So we've already have some uh, some customers who are kind of in the alpha program for API Packager. Uh, these guys started out a while ago as some of our early customers. Now it's being uh, adopted by more and more uh, mastery customers. But uh, this was a reaction from Tyler uh, Singletary over at Clout, who. Um, really said what he told me was that their whole API strategy is really now depends on Packager because uh, they are very much into creating different uh, different views of the cloud API for uh, different segments of their audience. And uh, this comment, I think, speaks a lot to how Packager lets him do that without having to go back to his coders. Um, so. We're going to take some questions. Uh, these questions, you could ask a question about, uh, in general, about managing APIs as products uh, or about the packager in particular. Uh, we actually, it looks like we have a whole bunch of questions already. Uh, let's see, the first one. Uh, how do you, how would I install packager? So, uh, Jeremy, do you want to speak to that? Yes, so in, as a software as a service, the Mastery API Packager doesn't require any installation. All it requires is turning on the feature for any one of our customers, and the set of capabilities that we talked about a little bit earlier will be instantly available. Okay. Um, another question, 
Uh, how does a packager learn about the details, basically the methods and fields uh, of a, that, that are returned by an API method? Terrific. Um, so there are a couple different ways to that the API packager, the feature, can, can learn about the, the methods and the details about the methods. Uh, one way is through our own reporting system. So as we begin to track incoming calls, we can uh, help our customer understand the structure of their API and the, and the response formats. So that's one way. The other way is to, to leverage the documentation um, so that the API product manager or potentially a documentation person can go into the tool and, and update and configure exactly how they want their methods to be defined and managed through the Mashery system. Okay, great. Um, can you do method level limits uh, and filters on specific resources? That's yes, question. And, and that really is one of the one of the key points of, of API Packager. It's not about just saying, do you have access to this API? Or do you have access to this URL? Um, specifically, it's it gets you or allows the API product manager could, to go down to the method level or in the rest world, the resource level, and say, do you, can you make this call? Um, how many calls per hour, for example, can you make to the specific resource or method? And then, of course, a response filtering for a given method or resource, which attributes do you want to include or exclude when a person makes a call to that particular thing. Okay. Uh, and next question, uh, are there going to be any improvements to Mashery reporting that take into account Packager? Definitely. Uh, so one of the, the benefits, and if you think back to the ESPN example of public, uh, public uh, now I'm forgetting Public it. partner, public premium partner, 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 premium partner, and, and, then the and ESPN, yeah, yeah. internal developers. Thank mm -hmm. you, Andy. Um, now they'll be able to see reporting access to those back-end services broken out by those plans. So it'll be very easy to understand, okay, which plan is being most successful, who's using it the most, uh, where are the potential issues. So if I have a premium partner, I can see the errors that they're experiencing through my API and make sure that they're getting prompt attention. Okay. Um, and another, okay, we'll have one time for one more question. Um, can the packager work with any development platform or language? Yes. So I don't know of any limitations in that area. Um, it is fairly, you know, loosely coupled to APIs. So if you can write an API in whatever language, then Mashery API Packager can handle it. Okay, great. Well, we have uh, a whole bunch more questions. Uh, if you, your question wasn't answered and you'd like it, uh, you'd still like to ask it, you can email me.